let me joyfully and humbly meet all those who love active medicine and look forward to achieving for the ecumenical government, especially in our country. Yesterday we had the DC executive meeting of the Khaza and Dr. Roger should have been there. The director of Khaza, Dr. Andrewa, he has sent his greetings to this ecumenical seminar in Kote. My assignment as the Indian's program chief is team presentation. I should confess before this assembly that I came to know the team only when I was a candidate in school. विषय आवरण में नहीं है विषय में तो मार ही दिया। As I look at it, the NCCI is national, so it needs to have a national level. It is not an organization; it is a council. It is a meaningful fellowship for all the Christians in India. We have, we have the dialogue and the trialogue and something more on the evangelicals and the established churches coming together <laughs> to think about, to discuss and sometimes worry about the future of this country. It is also a Christian task to be concerned about one's own country and the culture in which we find ourselves. At this time, again, we remember those ecumenical stalwarts who have shaped the national council of churches in India to be what it is today. The oldest member sitting here is Professor Nainan Foshi. I was just checking with him. He is general secretary who excuse me. How is the health of the NCCI? <laughs> is it not better than it <laughs> And this is interesting. We are introspective. Where we are heading for as an ecumenical body in this ancient land. Basically, we look at ecumenical concerns and moves as attempts at betterment of mutual understanding among churches and to talk in terms of wider ecumenism among religions and with people those who are no religion at all. So our vision is getting widened as we look forward and try to define what should be the shape of ecumenism in India and abroad. But one thing I would like to warn myself that in the present world, mere mutual understanding among churches or among religions will not suffice. We, do, we need to look forward and walk ahead bravely. And our wider ecumenism sometimes I feel is not as wide as we hope. It should be. Now one question that talks every thinking person in this country, does the secular world, secular India, listen to this voice of ecumenism in this country? This is for us to ruminate. Do we have listeners in this country? <coughs> we are doing this, we are dialoguing, we are trying, trying to connect with as many members of 
this world of ancient culture in this country. But does the secular world listen to us? The voice of the churches or the actions of churches together as we team. The media tells us in very plain language that patwas, patwa, and interdicts, interdicts is a very ancient word. In the Middle Ages, the Roman folk would say interdict. Interdict, the interdict falls on a country. No sacraments, no church services, the, the dead would lay under you. Those were the days. But today we know these atwas and interdicts have lost their sheen to a very great extent. But instead, we are challenged to inquire, to dialogue with anyone. That is to be emphasized, to dialogue with anyone, any group, with a willingness to learn, a willingness to know and know more. I have a very ancient example for me. In the early centuries, when Christian monasticism was taking shape in the Middle East, Saint Jerome and John Cassian, they went all the way to Palestine, to the Holy Land, just to visit, to stay there and study what is this thing called Christian ascetics. Whatever they learned, they went back into their own churches or situation and planted it. And we know the Western monastery today has its deep, its roots deep in the history of Christian monasticism in the East, especially in the Middle East. Now this is an example for all of us. I have just noted down a few issues that we face today and tomorrow. The first thing, religions are supposed to research and make us know what is the meaning of life. I hope I can agree with you. What is the meaning of life? I mean, everybody is talking about that. I'm also conscious that there is a section of population who are not serious at all about this thing called the meaning of life. But lack of self-criticism, lack of self-criticism in religions and ecumenical circles is bringing them down in today's world. Are we ready to introspect? This is the centenary year of the National Council. Are we ready to ask some very difficult questions, very disturbing questions about the National Council? The same with the seminary. This institution has been here for 2,000 years. Are we not 2,000 and not, it's 200 only. We won't be allowed to see 2,000, but I will see them. Let us get ready to ask some very disturbing questions of self-criticism. Now this is something that many of the churches lack. We pause in self-glory, in self-justification. But the time has come for us as churches and ecumenical partners around the world, be ready to get outside ourselves and look objectively at us what we are and what we are not. And where the church and religion fails, the secular ideology comes in. It's a very familiar scene. Sec very secular, it is the divine ideologies have come up and they are coming up even today. This happens mo mostly because religion has failed somewhere. What religion seemingly lacks 
is apparently fulfilled by secular ideologies. The look of our young people. Can we define fully and defend fully what we stand for in the name of religion, in the name of ecumenism? How many young people in our own place, in our own land, young people are interested in what we are hearing about this morning? So where religion fails or lacks in its sheen, something else naturally comes up, and one of them the secular ideology, the rise of secular ideologies. But remember, these ideologies have their roots in religion. Secular ideologies too try to explain what is the meaning of life, but only in distorted terms. This is a sorry thing to say. Where religion moves backward, Secular ideologies come to their planet, whether we want to welcome it or not. Secular ideologies, they take over, they try to explain what exactly is the meaning of life. And also we have the rise of sect, religious fundamentalism. In many ways, fundamentalism in whatever religion is trying to regain a sense of religion. It is the wrong way. As the saying goes, there is no right way to do wrong. I hope I understand what it is. There is no right way to do wrong. Where religious fundamentalism starts to explain what is the meaning of life. To me, they are trying to regain the real sense and meaning of religion. And it is in this context that we listen to the secretary of the Indian Ecumenical House. Dr. Roger talked to us, talked to us about dialoguing in passing. Our common understanding regarding dialogues between churches or between religions or between ecumenical movements and secular ideologies for that. Is mostly concerned about understanding the belief systems, understanding the worship styles of each other. And mostly put a stop with that. And here and there we, we go for charity work. We talk high about the need for understanding in this country because we are a minority, we always clamor for minority rights. In India, what does it mean to be a member of a minority community? When we have an educational institution or an institutional health care, do you know that other people who belong to other religions look ask us, what are these people doing? This is the hidden agenda for converting us. So let us be converted. So for us, it is something very positive. For them, it is not. This is the general atmosphere in which we are today in this country. So dialogue, in whatever form, becomes very shallow. We be limited to only between religious traditions. It is an accepted tenet today. Because secular ideologies have come to be the order of the day. So dialogue must not be conducted only on doctrinal or liturgical level, but at the, at the level of the ground realities as the media say. Let us keep our ears to the ground and listen to the million voices coming from youth, from ISIS, from the fundamentals in this country, from churches, people who rebel against churches and church regimes, 
But these are the times when we cannot just sit on the armchair. Satisfying ourselves, we are very good ecumenical people. That is why I raised the question, is India listening to ecumenism today in this country? But for many people, ecumenism is a Christian thing. It's not sort of a problem. It's something very Christian, so it is their business. This is the image that we have built up through the years. It all started with the missionary movement and it grew up from that. And today, tell you, you don't know where we are. Now, I was trying to drive what I said to the point where we should never avoid fundamentalism. The argument is put forward by fundamentalists sense of shiver down our spine when we talk about fundamentalism. The IS today in the next. Let us not insulate ourselves against self-criticism. This is my point. We are challenged to be more than what we are. But mostly, in reality, we are much less than what we are. From the different voices coming from out throughout there, we as Christians are challenged to be much more than we be what we are. Are we ready to accept? It is good to have seminars, symposia like this, and we talk about justice, justice, inclusive society, revisiting, re-envisioning, etc. But the real challenge comes from outside. Are we ready to be something much more than we are today? For me, there's a big question. And it seems religion has become weak in giving answers to questions regarding the meaning of life, not just in the religious. What is the meaning of life? That question need not be a religious question. We have theologians sitting here. If somebody is sitting out there who doesn't believe in the religion, he also may ask, what is the meaning of this life? Today, for many, not just for the secular, religion has come to mean personal devotion. Why should you worry? Today, religion has come to the narrative where it is personal devotion, sacramental participation, as we see, ethical advancement, and sometimes mystical experience, right or wrong. But let us believe, know, and tell the world that without religion, without a sense of religion, is more important for me. Secular ideologies give an empty expression, sometimes a violent expression, to the meaning of life. That is highest. Without a sense of religion, these secular ideologies will be even started an empty meaning of what it means to be alive. Life is supposed to be the greatest gift that God has endowed us with. Therefore, what I think about is, whatever dialogue or trialogue or more than that, needs to have a real impact on our society, not just within your within a, within a home, the four walls. Are we convinced that the ecumenical voices that we make today, they have an impact, some interest on a common man's life outside? Today, religion and some of the ecumenical movements are involved in humanitarian concerns. Thank God. We are. Especially in this country, Christians have been very active very pronounced in their educational movements and nuances made. 
and especially in healthcare. We are proud to say CMC, Indiana, or CMC, Valor, is a Christian institution. Dr. Aida wrote, this institution is to function in the spirit of Christ. That is what Dr. Aida said. In the spirit of Christ. So we need to just be proud of that. But these humanitarian concerns, though they are novel, they have very little power to influence and inform the powers that be the government. If you invite a minister, we all, we all praise for Christian community, for the education work we are doing, for the works of healthcare, and we give a clap, and the minister goes in front of what he said. This is happening in this country. Do you think we have been make an impact in terms of what we are doing, in terms of what we dream to do, on the society ourselves, people you know. Yesterday we had the easy, Casa easy, and the director of Casa, Atova was telling us he was in Kashmir recently, and some of the villagers are talking about this. They don't know about this, much about Christianity, but they know about Casa. And we had a natural calamity here. Kaza was here to help us. Now this is a point, a very meaningful point for me. When people have a consent, they're liking from inside. For an institution like Kaza, people they break and injure in this country. They don't know much about Jesus Christ, but they know Kaza has been here. So when we talk about the interfaith dialogue or whatever dialogue, it is not just a Christian concern, I, for me it's a human concern. Dialogue in whatever form is basically a human concern. It is the courageous you want to transgress the boundaries we have made for us in ecumenism and church service. We have made some imaginary boundaries, don't go beyond that. There is a brave enough to break this boundary sometimes when needed. That is the last thing I want to say. Whatever ecumenical movements of dialogue needs to have a spiritual function. We need to have a center, a spiritual center. I'm not referring to any church or any faith like that, but the spiritual India is known for its spiritual history. In a month and a half ago, we had the CCA pre-assembly dialogue in, in Jakarta. Susan was there. I was also asked to, to talk about the household of God. Now, what came to mind? And she liked it. What do you mean by household? In very simple English, it's not a pundit English. House, the word household for me, the house becomes a household. When there is something to hold the house together, then it becomes household. If there is nothing to hold the house together, we are setting up empty boxes. The household is not just the household of the churches, not the household of believers, believers church or non-believers church. It is the household of God. There is something to hold them together. What is it we need to research and fight it out? What is that which is to hold us together as the household of God? God heart in spirit is spirituality. We can help the evolution of a spiritual religion to unite humanity. Then a, few, a few years ago, in one of the CC assemblies, I think it was in Thailand or somewhere, Sam Swami Agniveshwar, Swami Agniveshwar Delhi. Then he said in the assembly for I have grown out of religion. I just kissed the Swami. I, I just asked the Swamiji, if you say you have grown out of religion, one day it may become another religion. But there is a sense in what he said. Even while we belong to a faith system, 
with church tradition. We need, like Gandhiji, open all the doors and windows and stand firm or put in our culture, in our faith, in our spirituality. Let all the winds come in from outside. The winds of IS, ISIS, the winds of Aries, the winds of Acherin, whatever it is. Gandhi said, I will stand here firm, I will not off my feet, but all the winds come in from outside. For me, this is excellence. Spirituality already has started evolving beyond the boundaries of organized religion. This is a fact. What I said this. Even without this paper, I am going to start. <laughs> the Roman Catholic theologian has been said, there will be peace on earth when there is a peace among religions. And why I start with a quote from the Book of Revelation. Chapter 21, verse 22. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord Almighty and Lamb are the temple. They are waiting for that day. For me, that will be the exact meaning of ecumenism and spirituality and religion. Thank you for your patience, listening, and kindness.